guys, so welcome back to the show. So today I have a guest and her name is Natalie Barbu. Uh, I, she's a creator just like me. She's also founder of an app called Rella. I see it as like a productivity app for creators. It's kind of like if you ever use Onum or Planoly and it meets like Notion because I love productivity apps and like it helps me so much with the creation. Yeah. Uh, so like I love that app. Well, thank you for the intro. I love seeing what other people, how other people describe like what Rella is because I want to see them like, okay, is our messaging good? Mm -hmm. Like are we, you know, is it clear what we do? You did such a good job. So <laughs> thank you. I'm thank glad, you. I'm glad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm Natalie. Uh, I'm a content creator. I've been a content creator for the past 12 years, actually, which is, like, insane. I am. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, too. Yeah, but I think mine is, like, because I did so much along the way. Like, sometimes, you know, when you do many things uh, while you do the content creation, it doesn't feel that long. Yeah. Because I think mine was, like, I started back in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but that's already, like, it's I know, like six I, years. I know, I know. But when you say it like that, it does feel like that. You're right. I know, like, when, when you hear 2017, you're like, oh, that's not that long ago. Right? And you're like, I know, that was six was... years ago. That's crazy. That is so true. Yeah. I didn't think of that, honestly. Yeah. But, yeah, so I've, I've been a content creator for a while, and then I am also the founder of a company called Rella, which you described, which, yeah, it's just a digital workspace for content creators to help them manage their content and their business. So anywhere from like planning your content to tracking your brand deals and keeping track of your deliverables and we're just doing, we're, we're really like adding a lot more things that are going to help, especially people that are just starting to make money on social media. So yeah. we're really excited about that. Um, and then I also have a podcast, The Real Real Podcast, and I'm going to have you on next. So yeah, it's gonna, I'm this. so excited for it. That would be cool. How would you say, because I know your journey in this content creation because you started from YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah, and like I've seen also because you shared, re when was it? I think it was kind of recent that you shared like your anniversary with YouTube, like it's 10 year anniversary, right? Yeah, well I guess 10 years would have been two years ago, but I'm about to hit 12 years this year. We don't count 2020, yeah. so. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I started on YouTube and it was like the early, early, early mm -hmm. days, like the beauty guru days of yeah, YouTube. Yeah, like the makeup, yes. like basic stuff that people would have yes. put it on. I was 15 and then like the fact that I thought that I knew how to do my makeup and like could teach people how to do makeup so right. much because like I needed someone to teach me. <laughs> you were like, what was I doing? No. What was I thinking? So bad. Like I will never forget when I thought I borrowed my mom's makeup and mm -hmm. there was this one thing called like MAC Paint Pots which you, it was like a eyeshadow uh -huh. and there was one that was like a nude color and I remember thinking it was concealer and I would like cover up my acne with it with like eyeshadow and I would <laughs> film and I'm like what was I doing? Like that was so oh bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's what was like kind of like the golden era of like YouTube like things were starting out and like everything was just like I don't know like amateur level but it was like so fun it was so much fun like I am so grateful that my 15 year old self decided to do that because right I, I'm like honestly shocked like I, I'm shocked and I'm not shocked because like I wasn't that confident back then so mm -hmm. like I, I'm shocked that I like did that, but I'm not shocked because I always loved video and I always was doing like even before I started my YouTube channel, I have like little random skits and music videos on YouTube. Who knows where they are? I know <laughs> that they're not there anymore, but like from when I was like nine, ten, eleven, like, yeah. I was, like literally in the first year that YouTube was around, mm. I would film and I would post them on YouTube, like not for anyone to watch, but just because I like loved video content. So. That doesn't surprise me that I started, but it surprises me because I didn't have much confidence and I'm like glad that I like did that and stuck with it. For sure. And I remember, I mean, tell me like how you fell at first. I remember the time, you know, like they said like you were eligible to get paid like from YouTube AdSense oh, and yeah. they were checking like a small deposit to like confirm your account. Yes. When I, so back when I was doing, like when I first started, um, a few years later, that there was this thing called Style Hall. Do you remember Style Hall? I don't, I don't know if I remember. I think I have definitely like heard about it, but I don't, like I don't remember the details for it. it but like, I know what you're talking about. It was horrible. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by our partner Mint Mobile. So once again, I want to talk about Mint Mobile because I just feel like these days we are spending so much money on so many things, like starting from as little as like groceries to as big purchases like rent. Everything is just so expensive and I just feel like there is no need to spend extra for something that you can find cheaper 
for the same service or for the same thing. And that's what I love about Mint Mobile. They offer one of the greatest services in terms of the premium wireless phone service plan for literally the same service. They have like the same coverage, same data, same speed, but for less price. And they are built on nation's largest 5G network. The difference is because they sell directly to you, hence they can keep the cost low because there's no retail stores, no salespeople. And the best part I like about them is that like everything is so fast, the process of it, because if you have eSIM technology on your iPhone or on your phone, you can just go to their website and buy the number that you want and you can activate it right away. There it is, you have the phone number. I literally just did that for my business and I'm using that phone for my business. Super easy. You can just go to minmobile.com slash WB to use my code and you can just get started for as low as $15 a month. I think that's such a great deal in this economy. So don't forget to take this opportunity. Go to minmobile.com slash WB. It was pretty much a network <laughs> that it was a network that a lot of like the bigger YouTubers. Oh, yeah, I know. I remember now. Yeah, yes, I remember now. They were on it, and so they would talk about how they have like a network. And it was Style Hall. Style Hall quickly got like kind of realized that everyone wanted to be a part of Style Hall, mm -hmm. so they could rip off like smaller creators. Yeah, yeah. So they would t they made us sign like if you were approached by Style Hall back then, it was like an honor. I was like, oh my god, I cannot believe that like Style Hall plays their stuff. Yeah. Yes, like it wants to work with mm. me. It's kind of like I would think of it as like Dear Media today in the I sense see. of like Dear Media, that podcast network, like everyone knows about it, and like it would be such an honor to like work with Dear Media or whatever. And I think of it kind of like that, except Dear Media doesn't rip people off; like they don't accept everyone, yeah, you know. Exactly. But imagine if like. They did. So Style Hall would go up to these small creators and they would say, Hey, I'm gonna give you you here's like you're gonna join onto our network. We're gonna help you. We're gonna we're gonna get you higher paying ads on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So like, your CPM increases. Is that higher? Yeah. And that's what they said. And then you're gonna have access to like this music library and all of this stuff that they would like promise you and like we're gonna help you like with your content and get discovered, blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the contract was? What? They're gonna take forty percent of your revenue for four right. years. Oh my god, four years! That's four cool. years, and I was locked into that for four mm -hmm. years. The, and they don't tell you in the contract it was an auto renewal. It said like we're gonna renew it this if you oh. don't cancel. Thank God, four years came, and I remember was I was I like had it in my calendar when I needed to reach out to them to cancel, be like, cancel this yeah. contract. But if not, I would have been trapped for a. It was like. Such a scam, such they took advantage of small creators because like it was it was the worst. <laughs> that is so awful. And I feel like it's not just them, like there are a bunch of other companies that I know that like they do this shit with like especially renewal. Unless you like reach out to them before the end of the expiration date yep. for the contract, it gets automatically renewed and you'll be like locked in for life. Like yeah. you have no idea. Like thank God I signed with them when I was that small when I wasn't making a lot of money because it, like I really yeah, wasn't it making much money. Like it was not a lot. But like at one point I think I was maybe making like I don't know, like five hundred dollars a decent. month. That's like something, you know. I mean, compared to what like YouTube is turning now, like yeah. So for five hundred dollars a month, and they're taking forty percent of that. Yeah. I'm only keeping like what, like three hundred dollars, and, and you have to pay taxes. Yes. <laughs> you have to pay taxes on that too. Yes, and I'm like, this just it does not sound right to me. And thank God I got out of it. I don't think they're in business anymore. I think they're out of business now. But yeah, those were that was. That was a big thing. You ask any beauty guru from like, I don't know, seven years ago, they'll, they'll probably resign the style hall and have the same experience. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of glad like that I feel like the other platforms came around, like the Instagram, like the TikTok is now around, like, because I feel like you have more opportunities because I feel like back then it was just like YouTube and I feel like even when you were say like YouTuber and they're like, what is that? Like, oh yeah. And like now, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's so crazy because now like everyone is a content creator. Oh, and literally every single person. Everyone. Yeah. Like, even if you're not, like, wanting to do it full-time. You still, like, part-time. was like yeah, yeah, you still partake and you still post. Like, great. Which I think is great. Like, that's why I think, like, the I started an app for content creators and I feel like the market is so great. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Like, it's everyone huge. is a content creator now. But it's also just... I just remember getting, like, made fun of for it or being told, like, when I quit my job to do this full-time, it was like, what are you doing? Like, you are crazy for quitting your job. 
what happens when this goes away? Like, okay, so you have like your parents' money because there's no way you can actually be making money on this. Yeah. He was like not accepted in society for the most part. Um, and now it is, so I'm glad for that. But it's just like yeah, because happens. I was listening to like your I think one of the recent episodes. You were talking about like imposter syndrome and yeah. like how you were like describe yourself in, in, as a job. That's like the same thing I do sometimes. When people ask me like, "What do you do?" And I was like, "I mean like social media marketing." <laughs> like, I'm like, why do we do that? I, I just don't know why I do it. I don't know why. We have to start being like proud of what we do. Yeah, know? that's literally what I say, and I hope that they don't ask me follow up questions. But they always do. They always because they don't know what that means. Exactly. They really don't know what that means. You have to just say, like, hey, I'm a content creator. Like, I put, like, here's my Instagram. Follow me. Okay. Like, <laughs> Let me tell you though. I, again, there's like no shade to this, and I, I respect everyone's hustle. I feel like sometimes when you say like content creator, they would sometimes assume that like OnlyFans creator or something. I just there's nothing wrong with that. Like especially I respect Miami. that. Yeah, exactly. It's especially Miami. <laughs> Literally especially Miami. Like amount of people that I try to like connect and like just have like in my podcast and many when I used the word collaborate, they thought I was talking about somebody else. Oh I'm my serious. God. I'm serious. No, I think see I've never actually thought that. Like I've never actually thought that people would think it's like OnlyFans, but now that I think about it, especially in Miami. In Miami, 90% Miami, met, yes. 100%. I've met a lot of people that are on like OnlyFans. And nothing wrong with that, like yeah. it's just like, I feel like it's just, that's what the first thing people assume. Yes. That's and why I, I feel like I try to like, not like there's anything wrong with it, I just feel like I, will, I don't necessarily want to be resonated by it. That's yeah, what. that's just not your content. And you don't want people to think that's your content. Exactly. That's yeah. why I'm like, I don't know if I should say content creation. That's why I'm like, oh, let me start with like social media. You should say I'm a lifestyle content creator. Yeah, like something like. Start with a niche <laughs> right away. Yeah. Okay, let's do that now. Let's yeah. try it. I'm, I, I'm curious to see how that works. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. <laughs> well, since we're talking about Miami, so you also moved to Miami like not too long ago. So. What, what would you say like some of the things that like you just like experienced new here or just like so different comparing to where you were from? Yeah. But so, also she also lived in New York and like that's why I feel like we connected so much. Yes. Um, too. Yes. No, I, so I did grow up in South Florida from when I was like, I, I moved to North Carolina when I was nine. Mm -hmm. So I, I spent like my childhood, like half of my childhood here yeah. in South Florida, like a little north of Miami. Um, and so I always like considered Miami a second home because I have family down here. We would come like all the time. So I always knew Miami was just like a different world. Yeah. Like I think when people don't know about Miami or have never visited Miami or have never been here, it's hard to describe because it truly is like you're in another country. It does feel like that. It doesn't feel like the rest of the United States. Like I used to not believe that like statement, but now I do. No, it doesn't feel like you really like, like, yes, of course you feel like you live in the U.S., but like it doesn't at the same time because one, Everyone here speaks Spanish, so it does feel like you're in a Spanish-speaking country. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone speaks Spanish here, and, like, Spanish music, Spanish culture, Spanish, like, Hispanic food, and, like, I love it. Like, I'm Hispanic, like, I'm Latina, so, mm -hmm. like, I do love that, but I can see why, like, other people coming here, it's, like, a culture shock to them. Yes. And so, it's, I think there's just a culture shock moving here, because you're like, whoa, everyone really does speak Spanish. Like, you're the odd one out if you don't speak Spanish. 100%. And like, I'm like, many times I tried to go to like a barbershop and stuff, right? I'm like, I only know like a few words in Spanish. So I'm like, I don't know how to say this. I have to open like Duolingo. Yeah. I'm like, I need to study this better. And I'm assuming that people think that you speak Spanish because you know, you're tan. Yeah. And you like look like you probably would speak it here. So like they just assume everyone's Yeah, literally nine out of ten. They, yeah. they would, even if you are like a white person, oh, yeah. Yeah. they would still expect that like you know Spanish. Yes. They would not even ask if you speak Spanish. Yes. And so, and also we just talked about this, but like the drivers here are the worst drivers in the country. Country. Like, I don't care what I've driven in LA. I haven't driven in New York, but like, I've been in New York, like in Ubers and everything yeah. like that. Um, I've been in all different, like, big cities in the US. Nothing compares to the drivers in Miami. It's like funny. And if you don't believe us, <laughs> Follow only in Dade. Oh my god, I love that account. I love that account. That account is so good. It's, it's literally pure Miami. It really shows you what Miami is like, and it's like not an exaggeration. Like yeah, that's what's funny 100%. about it. Those things that they post, they're not like out of the ordinary. People think that that's like once in a blue moon. No, I'm like no, that's like every day yeah. in Miami. That's like literally every single day. Like, like you think that's like one in, one in like million. No. <laughs> I saw someone one the other day, I was driving and I was getting like on an expressway, like I was yeah. getting on a causeway and 
and this person was like merging onto it, just stops in the middle and starts reversing because like they didn't mean to get off to like, and I'm like, you are going to cause the biggest accident. Like I'm sitting here just like, dude, this is not the place to reverse on a freaking like, like, no. like merge onto a highway. You missed your turn. The GPS will reroute you. Like just go. And they just, I just, I just speechless. No, and I'm like, this is pure my Like I don't even get like phased by it anymore. It's just like laughable. Like the other day, I was going to like Equinox in South Beach, and so there's like the garage that's attached to it. So I, it's like a multi-level garage, and you're like you have to go to the second floor and the third floor. I was going to park in the second because like, Equinox is the third floor. It's like it's two-way traffic, but there's like one Range Rover that did not park so well, so like other side of the traffic is kind of blocked out. Yeah. So I was gonna go in the way that like you just go back down, but there's this Jeep that's blocking me, and I was like, can you just like back up just a little bit? I would just sit it like so politely. He like got out of his car, what? started yelling at me. Did you beep or like what? No, I didn't. I literally just was like, can you back up a little bit? Literally just said back up because like Range Rover parked so bad. Yeah. But he started yelling at me. <laughs> like he started yelling. Imagine like everyone behind me, they also be backed up. Like we backed up and parked in the first one. No, it's like. I was so scared. I was like, I don't know what to do. Also, they're ready to fight here. Oh, they're so ready to fight. All I know is like they have a gun. That's oh. all I can assume. I'm like, maybe they have a gun. I don't See, know. Everyone but, always says that they're like, don't beep because you never know if they have a gun. I think not. that's what I keep getting from everyone. They're like, just be calm. Like, you oh, don't know what and they see, have. like, I'm, I mean, I'm not like that though. I will like lay on my horn. Like, You're I like, will, uh, and I'm not proud of this. I flicked a few people off. Like, I'm like, <laughs> like I'm just like, dude, like, I have, I, yeah, no, I'm like laying on my horn being like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, it's not like my proudest moment. But these people need to like know that you can't drive like that. But then yeah, my friends are like, don't do that. Like they might have a gun or something, especially in Florida. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. that's why I try to remind myself sometimes. When I like road rage is coming up, I'm like, nope. Yeah. I, I should do that, but no, I can't. I'm like one of those where I'm like laying on my horn, like being like, get out of the way. Like yeah, it's, it's no, it's so. I've it's, become a Miami driver. Yeah, no, it's insanely. <laughs> no, it's just so crazy in that aspect. But I think something else I have also noticed. Correct me if that's just my observation. Is like I feel like. In New York or even places like in Los Angeles too, it's like people really, yes they dress up, but like they dress up when there's an occasion. They don't really care so much what they wear on a regular basis. Yeah. They would literally sometimes look like a homeless person. Yeah. Like, and nobody cares. But in Miami, I feel like people care so much about their like look. Yeah. Every, even like going to a grocery store, yeah. they look so presentable like 9 out of 10. I think it's like that just like again the Hispanic culture because I know some like Latina women they will literally blow their hair out and put makeup on to like deliver a child. Like oh to like get go to labor. Like it's like yeah. I think it's just that it's ingrained to like yeah. you have to look nice. Maybe the younger generation not as much but I know like well my grandma I've never seen her without makeup on. Like yeah. that woman always <laughs> has makeup on and she always has her hair done. It's like it's just like a, I don't know, maybe that's that's why, but I've noticed that here too. Would you also say like people are more upfront here? Or at least that's what I have. Like, what do you mean upfront? Like, like I feel like if they like, especially I feel like this is what I have experienced when it comes to like just even with friends too, is that like, I feel like if they want to hang out with you and stuff, like they would like immediately ask for your number or something. Versus oh. like I feel like in New York and other places, it kind of like takes like, if you try, like you meet second time or something, if like the vibe is good and like you go for it. In here, I, I see like it's just a lot faster in a way. They're like, oh, do you want to come to this party or do you want to do this? I'm like, oh. yeah. I mean, cool, it's just it's new for me. It's yeah, totally new. actually, yes. So, I, I especially like at influencer events, I've noticed that too. People, I actually prefer that though because yeah. then it's like, okay, it's like. It's been easier for me to make friends here than anywhere else that I've agreed. met. Hundred percent agree on that too. And I love that because I, because of that I think yeah. so. And like I also think for me it's like so many people just moved to Miami in the past like two or three years, mm -hmm. so everyone kind of wants friends. And so I think that's why people are like all eager to meet friends. So then they'll they'll ask you. But I've actually found even though I do think that people here are ready to fight and they can be rude. They are. <laughs> like they're not the nicest. But for some reason I think that like the friend the. The people that at least I've surrounded myself with have all been very friendly and very accepting and very yeah. inviting and I actually really love that compared to like New York and LA, like mm -hmm. didn't feel that as much. And I feel like it's also the fact that like 
Miami is kind of a place so like, because like the weather is nicer and everything it's like people are more likely to, to do many other things yeah. like other activities versus like New York and LA it's like such a hustle it's always about the hustle at least even in New York it's, yeah. just, it's just hustling always working constantly they don't necessarily prioritize so much about like having friends or friendships that much versus totally like they're just agree. like it's all about work like yeah. what is next for me like yeah. they have like maybe two or three jobs like so crazy yeah no i actually I, I really agree and like here people are just down to do things like they are they really are my social life has never been more like and they're so spontaneous yes. i love that it's i love that they're so spontaneous yeah it's like hey do you want to go to this like oh i i know this guy that like invited me to this dinner we can get like free drinks and if you want to go and i'm like okay or like but you had me at free drinks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like if there's just a lot more they I, I don't know i find that there's more to do here than there than at least I found in New York and LA, but also like maybe with just the people I was hanging out with. I think it's because I have more friends here than I did there. And mm -hmm. then because it's been easier for me to make friends here. And it's been I mean, I've preferred living here than New York and LA. Um that and like I don't know, I just like I love living here. Yeah. No, I feel like no in terms of like the social and like like friends and everything, I feel like that's definitely a great aspect. I'm just more like thinking about like I, I guess as a creator, that's what I have experienced. I'm like, don't get me wrong, Miami's still like a major city, but it's not not like New York no, and LA. Like, not really like slow in terms. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's like I immediately noticed like a big shift from like getting the invites to like New York City events and like all of a sudden it's like there's not much happens here. It's like maybe once in a blue once in a while there's totally. something happens. There's not many events here unless there's something going on like F one or Yeah, Chile. like like Formula One or like there's yeah. like I don't know, like the Art Basel or like yeah. some big events though. Like that's right. like maybe twice a year, like Exactly. But honestly like I kind of like that because in New York, there's so many big creators that it's like hard to stand out. So true. So Where true. here, there's not that many creators, so you can really like represent yourself as like a Miami creator, which I like. Like I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond than like a small fish in a big pond when it comes to content creation. That's so true because I feel like in New York, you disappear so quickly. Yeah. Because like so even if you are like just like talented or whatever you're doing, just there's just so many people like you. There's exactly. so many people like not like in a bad way, just like just there's just the truth. Yeah, where some people have come up to me and they're like, Oh my god, before I moved to Miami I watched your videos or I like followed you because like I wanted to see what it was like to live here and even the and and it's because there's not that many uh, I agree. influencers. Like that's why I was so like glad like I found your videos because I don't think I would have even considered like I mean, yes, I thought about it in the head, but like I didn't necessarily consider it until like I came across your videos. Just to, like I wanted to get a feel of like what Miami is kind yeah. of. Yeah, like. and so that's why I'm like, all of your content, like put Miami in the title so that you can like really solidify yourself as like a Miami creator. Yeah, that's why like I was really rooting for you. I remember like you were like, you know, like you said like you might go back to yeah. New York, and I was like. Is she gonna go back to New York? I, I kind of want to leave New York. I'm like, I'm curious. To, like, that's why I get so excited. My creators like move to new cities. Me too. Because I'm like, I'm kind of curious as like, what is that city like? Because you can like see through their eyes and like kind of experience it for yourself without spending money. I'm exactly. There. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. So I don't know about you, but do you feel like New York is now the LA? Like when five years ago, every YouTuber, every creator was in LA, Agreed. and it was like. Oh my god, don't move to LA, don't be like all those other creators. Yes, yes. Now, I think New York is like that. 100%. Everyone I completely is in New agree. York. I completely agree. And it's Every like, other creator is like in New York. It's I, kind of overdone. That's and that's why I get, I feel like I got so annoyed by it because I'm like, I'm just so over it. I am really, really over it. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I feel like there is like, there's definitely so much to un like uncover about that, but I feel like definitely that's the biggest aspect of New York City is like, even like the amateur was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to New York or doing something like, it's not that exciting. Like, chill, please chill. And also, I think Alex Earl put Miami on the map in a good way. I she think. did. She really did. And so I'm like, thank you, girl. Like, they, it's like you're you're coming. You're 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 making us proud. I know. I'm like, I'm so glad that she's like staying here for now. And like, because I think now people think of when people think of Miami, they think of her. Like if they're in the influencer space. Yes, agreed. I feel like we know who Alex Earl is, but if you guys don't know, just go on TikTok and type "Get Ready with Me." Cool. <laughs> you will know what I'm talking about. It, yeah. I wish she literally, essentially trademarked "Get Ready." Because yes. No one would like do "Get Ready with Me" and like talk, or uh, maybe not, they would once in a while, but like it wasn't like a not thing. like the story times. She merged no. "Get Ready with Me" and story times. Oh yes, hundred percent. And it's just like she, even though "Get Ready with Me" were always a thing. 
she like really owns she that. She literally rebranded that. Yeah. I would say that. Because like the, have you seen like the latest drama about tarts and like the chart like yeah. turkey cake is? It reminds me of dope. Do you remember dope? <laughs> yes, yes, I remember, I remember that. that. I'm like, this is Deja Vu. <laughs> no, but the fact that you guys should Google this too is like the CEO of Tart was like doing get ready with me and she was like <laughs> apologizing. I'm like, how? What? <laughs> Who gave this approval? I saw that and I was Clearly like- Clearly herself. Just herself. <laughs> no, the, the worst is like she was like curling her hair like not even like well. Like I was like- No, it was so bad. It was so bad. Like, Guys, I missed the mark on this. I'm like, sit down and do a proper apology. I, like, not... <laughs> I know, like so please. No, I think the greatest thing I like about her, Alex Earl, and also like the how she made Miami. It's just I feel like she really represents so much of Miami too. It's like because Miami is kind of a place that yes, don't get me wrong, it's like a very wild place. It's like there's a lot of parties, there's a lot going on, yeah. but it's definitely also a place that you can definitely enjoy yourself too. Yes, like it's not. I feel like people think that like it's so wild. It's like party after party. Yes, if you are into that, but you can also do many other totally. things. Totally, me and my friends never go to clubs like ever, and like it can be. It can be super toxic. Like, yeah. it can be so crazy. And, but the, I love what I love about Miami is that, like, if I want to go to a club, like, if my you friends can. visit you me can. and they want to experience that nightlife, we can go easily. But, like, I am not, you will not catch me there on a normal <laughs> weekend. But, like, that's like, I like to go out for drinks and to, like, bars and stuff like that. But, like, I've never been to space. I've only been to 11. I was just space. Yeah, I've never been to space. I've been to 11, like, twice. Yeah. And I never want to go back. Like I, it's it's, it's just not for me. It's yeah, so intense. And I feel like the fact that like in New York at this, even people say like, oh, the city that never sleeps. But people like go home like after two or something. Oh yeah. And here people come home at nine a.m. You know, literally, and they're like, that's a good night. This I'm is like, the what? city that never sleeps. Yeah, I'm like, what? Like, are you serious? I have never come home the the time that I went to the club. Maybe that earliest I came like maybe 4 a.m. I'm like, oh, that yeah. is, I know like, that's early. That's yes. early for people. No, same, <laughs> same. I always, if I end up going to a club, it, I'm getting home at 5 a.m. Yeah, you. I always tell myself that it's going to be 2 a.m. It's just never no, is. It's, it's never, never is. No, I got home the other night. I told, because we had like a, a busy day the next day. And I was yeah. like, we are getting home by 1 a.m. Like 1 a.m. And like, that was early. We got, I ended up getting home at like 1.30. But I was like, oh good, that's an early night. But you and have I'm to like, like really, like you have to really push yes. yourself to do it. Because yes. otherwise it's just not happening. I'm like 1.30 a.m. Like getting home, I was so proud of myself because we had gone out and I'm like, and we didn't even go to a club, we went to Wynwood. Like it wasn't even like a club or anything. And I'm like, <laughs> any other city, 1.30 the bar is winding down and like people are like last call, like lights are on, like it's yeah. like the city is winding down. Here it's like the night is getting started. It's for sure. so, for it sure. does, yeah, it, it's so bad. <laughs> it is really bad. And I feel like what's the greatest thing about Miami is that like, I feel like people immediately think of South Beach. Yeah. But I'm like, there's so much more to it. There's yes. like, obviously, just what you just mentioned, Wynwood, there's Edgewater, you know, there's Brickell, like, uh, there's, I, I have been so obsessed with Coconut Grove. Oh, like, like, love I love Coconut that area. Coconut it kind of reminds me so much like LA in some ways. It does. Like, have, really you been, have you been to Mexico City? Yes. It reminds me a lot of Mexico City. Really? Too. Like, so yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely see that. It like really reminds me of it. Yeah, I just feel like, I feel like the reason I want to mention this is because I feel like people immediately think of just South Beach. Yeah. I'm like, there's so many more places to explore in Miami and to discover. Yeah. Um, you're also like in the market for a house, right? Like, Yes, I, I'm. In, Does that mean you would say like you're condo. seeing yourself like settled down here, or more like investment purpose? Honestly, what I see saying? myself yeah. living here long term. Yeah. I think also because I grew up in South Florida, I mm -hmm. know what like a childhood is like here, and like I really do it's love like, it. Be a safe place. Yeah, and like I just love the beach. Like I don't think I can live anywhere that doesn't have a beach anymore because I know, I, it's I'm so always nice there. to have a beach. Like, like the access to the beach like in 10 minutes or yes. so is like nice. And I'm always at the beach. Like I know some people when they live in a place with a beach, they're like, oh, I never go just because it's always there. Yeah. I take advantage of it. I go at least once a week. All my weekends are pretty much spent at the beach if I can. Like I really, really love the water. And so I need to be in like a warm weather, like beach place. And so like what better place than Miami for that? And I need to be by a city. Like I can't just live in like a little beach town in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. like, no, I need to be like in a city as well. So I actually see myself here. Like I would yeah. love, ideally, I want to live at the beach. I'm looking at Miami Beach right now yeah. for a condo. I would love to live there for a few years, then have that for investment purposes when someone's like ready to like yeah. go to a house or something, rent that out, and then I would love to live in the Grove. 
like with a family. Nice. Like I would love for a family so in the nice. Grove or like South Miami. Like that. I think that's. I think like South Miami's or Grove is like it's really nice place to end up in our thirties. I yes. feel like you're, you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that's in three years. I know. I'm like you have time. You have time. Yeah, mid, mid to late thirties. <laughs> yeah, you're getting there. So yeah. I feel like that's gonna happen. <laughs> I know. I'm like. 30s. <laughs> I don't know. I just sometimes think about it. I'm like, I want to make an episode like some things like I learned in my 20s. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. I'll yeah. wait. Wait, how old are you again? 27. Okay, me too. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm like, like, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna wait like three more years. Yeah, so don't but it's kind of like tune in some years. But yeah, it's coming. <laughs> don't age us yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you say once you become a creator after a while, like? Things I feel like become somewhat stagnant in a way because I feel like at least for me it was like it has never been like one video went viral and like all of a sudden I became a creator. Mine is like okay, like maybe one thousand followers. Next is like three thousand. It's like it's just like very slow for me. And afterwards I kind of grew, but like it was never been like viral video. How was it for you? Like after a while, like I feel like first being a creator is easier in the beginning of it, but once you get in a stage, it's like. 10 to whatever 50k followers is kind of it's so different right yeah it really is it's so hard to grow i feel like when you're at that point and yeah. i think you just can't accept like super like viral growth forever like that's only like a very it's not sustainable it's really not sustainable yeah so for me i always i mean one thing it's it's just to remember that like you should have a content strategy like long term you shouldn't just think about the here and now of mm. like because like if you expect every video to go viral or that's your benchmark of success, like you are always gonna be disappointed and then you're gonna get burnt out because you're like, I'm putting so much effort in and none of my videos are doing well. So you have to think long term. You have to think like, okay, in two years from now, this consistency is gonna pay off. Hundred percent. Even if I get like a hundred views on a video. So I never really viewed it as like I need to go viral. And yeah. I never really did go viral. Like I have a few videos on TikTok that have hit a million, not many, but a few. And then I have, you know, a, like I have one video on YouTube that has a million views. Mm -hmm. And then I have like the rest, like I have a few videos that have done well, but like for me, being consistent was always more important than like, doing well because if you continuously post, you, people are going to watch. Like you're not, yeah. you will get, you will grow a community. It's like, I think it's like impossible to like always post and conti continuously post and have a consistent schedule and like not grow some form of community. Yes. Even if it's small. Yeah. Like, but like, I think you have to think long term rather than short term. Yeah. And I would say, correct me, because like maybe that's my experience. I feel like viral thing was not even a thing before TikTok. I feel like yeah. even on YouTube and stuff, there was no such thing as viral. Yeah, like people have million videos, but the millions of views of in the videos, but it wouldn't be like right or like it would take. Yes. Even on Instagram, it would be like overnight. I feel like on Instagram there was never anything. That there, was, uh, there was never like, oh my god, my video went viral. Never, mm -hmm. ever. Like, yeah. even if it got good views, but it was not like viral. Like everyone saw it. Unless it was like, do you remember that? Like one time there was this like swimwear brand like, that was like red. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you remember that one? That's what it went viral. Yes. You guys don't know, just Google like red, red bikini. Literally red just bikini. Red, bikini. <laughs> red bikini. That is all you need you to know. Look you, you will know what we're talking about. That's so funny, yes. That That's the only thing that went viral. That's the only thing that went viral. I wonder, did anyone get that bikini? I was just wondering the same thing. I'm like, I've never, I didn't see anything afterwards. <laughs> I didn't see anything afterwards. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, so I, I think with YouTube, like things would do really well. Yeah. And like, there would be people that blew up, like Emma Chamberlain, you know, she just yeah. like, blew up. So I do think that there were some, like, YouTube had more virality than Instagram. For, for sure. sure. But for now sure. it's just like TikTok. I think. Oh yeah, it's TikTok. And I feel like it's just also because like, I feel like that's what TikTok kind of like, not necessarily ruined it, but like changed it for people. They feel like people who have like maybe 10 followers, but they have like one video that has millions of views. I know. And they're like, oh, I'm a viral. I was like, okay, like I have like, I don't know, over 16K followers, but like I barely had any videos that got like millions of views. But I'd rather that because like, I don't want people following me because of one video. video I agree. I I'd agree. rather have people follow me over, they've seen me like two or three times, and they're like, yes. I like her, let me yeah, follow yeah. her. Because if you get someone go like follow you over one video, like for example, all my breakup content has done well, as you know. <laughs> um, and I'm like, people are following me from that, which is cool. But I'm like, but that's not the only content that you, yeah. About breakup, so like, I hope that you guys are here for like my other content too. Or like, if you post something about like, I don't know, like, let's say you post a cool tip about like being a content creator. Yes. It's like not all my content is gonna be about being a content creator. So I hope that you're okay with that. 
And so I'd rather have people like watch a few videos and then like me rather than like one video, which is why I think YouTube is great because like they can really get a sense of who you Agreed. are versus like TikTok. It's like you're, that one video could have nothing to do with your stuff. Yeah, and I feel like what I have come to realization that like there are going to be some videos that I'm going to make just so I can gain more followers and subscribers and some videos I'm going to make for my current subscribers mm -hmm. or current followers because and I know that they're not going to like get thousands of views they're going to get like maybe a couple hundred or whatever but like I'm doing it just for current subscribers so they can be like satisfied in a way exactly. and I'm kind of like I'm like I'm going to accept that like yep yeah it's there's... important to accept that just don't have expectations on how a video will do or yeah. else I think you're going to get like more burnt even out the ones that you think that they're going to <laughs> oh yeah and I'm like, or they're gonna do so well and just like it flops yeah it's like i have no meter of like what's gonna do well yeah anymore. also you just mentioned in the earlier when i was asking you like the burnout i was gonna ask you about that too how like i the thing is in the beginning of like being a creator i think it was very hard for me because i feel like you tend to associate everything that you do with likes comments or even get the brand deals that you're getting and you're like wow like Maybe I'm not doing so well. Yeah. Maybe I need to work on myself. Or like you just like I don't know. I feel like things just get like so south so quickly. All of a sudden you feel on the top of the world, and all of a sudden you're like, I just hate everything. I hate my content. You're questioning your craft a lot. Yeah. How do you deal with it? Like nowadays, comparing to what it was before yeah. I was career. I think for me, I just started really accepting. Like I do not care about the numbers, and have constantly telling myself yeah. that, and then being like, you know what? Screw the whole niche thing. Like yeah. I have to put. I can't post this because it's like off brand mm -hmm. I'm gonna post whatever I want as if like th like I'm just gonna post and I'm just gonna see what sticks and if people like yeah. it great if not I'm posting it for me I'm posting it because it's my creative outlet and I just started having more fun with it like before I used to say like all my blogs need to provide value or else I'm not gonna post them yeah and now I'm like you know what I'm gonna post a random weekend even if it literally provides no value but I'm shot yeah. in Miami so like Okay, cool. Or I'm showing my personality. Okay, cool. Like that's what's that's what it's gonna be. But I think for so long I got trapped in this like thinking that like this has to be like a really highly yeah. produced video or mm -hmm. it has to provide so much value. And now I'm just like posting whenever I want. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like I don't even like really look at the numbers that much because I'm like it doesn't matter. I'm posting this if it gets one view or if it gets a thousand views or if yeah. it gets a million views. Like I want to post this. And so I think having more fun with it and just like being more carefree has made me enjoy it more and like actually want to post more. For sure. It reminds sure. me of like the older days. Or yeah, and I feel like that's what like the, sometimes people don't understand that like, and I feel like I get it. Like at the end of the day, it is our career. We do make money with it. That's how we pay our bills. But I feel like I never want us to like take it too seriously that like, we're gonna just burn out and like right. feel bad about what we are doing. Because I feel like I remember the way I started is because like, I was right out of college and like I was like I didn't have many friends or whatever and I was like I just want to share what I'm doing currently at the moment and that's how I kind of like got started on it uh, but that also made me connect with many people and I realized like wow like that's kind of cool like it's yeah. fun like it's really fun to like share like oh like I I'm wearing this clothes so it's like oh this fits like this or this doesn't fit like this not because it's sponsored or anything just I just want to share it's exactly. just fun like Sometimes like I remember like it gives me the biggest joy sometimes like spend money on things that, like I don't necessarily like but I'm like I'm gonna share my opinion. It's exactly. fun. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? I feel like people nowadays like Because content creation has become such a place that like oh like I can be a creator Everyone is like when you ask sometimes like kids these days they're like I'm gonna be a creator it's the It was not a thing on. like that for us that's why I feel like people immediately see like, oh, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. I'm like, Literally. it's not like that. It really is not like that. It's so hard to make a living off being it a is. content creator. It is so unpredictable. It's very unpredictable and also it takes a lot of time. I think a lot of people expect because they see people doing it full time that they're like, oh, let me just start this and do it. If your goal is to solely make money, you are going to get burnt out and you will stop. I agree. That's like, why I feel like you have to have passion. Like you have to make fun of make have fun with it. I yes. mean, have fun with it. Definitely have fun with it. You have to enjoy what you're creating, even if it doesn't pay you. Because yeah. for a while, it will not pay you. Oh, no, it won't. I didn't do it full time for eight years. I mean, now it shouldn't take you eight years because, like, yeah, like it's a it's lot more well faster for yes. sure. Yeah. But, but it's still, still going to take time. It's still going to take still, time. It might take a few years. Like, it's not going to, yeah. it probably will not happen in less than a year. Like, yeah. that would be like an insane success. And I story. feel like even then, like, even if you get paid, people think that, like, 
just because you quit your job and you're gonna get the same amount of money from like the job that you quit that was like paying you 60, 70K, you're not gonna get that from your first brand deal. Oh, like you're no. maybe gonna get like, I don't know, like on a good day 500. Like yeah. I'm just saying, like if, depending on where you're starting, I'm just saying it's not gonna be six figures. It's yeah. not. I feel like people immediately expect that like they're gonna like rack up those numbers so quickly. Yeah, no, and, and also like you just, it, you don't know like when a brand deal is coming in you don't that's why you have no. to have a little bit more of a cushion and you have to have a little bit more of like a steady income like yeah. maybe you've been creating content and like making money for the past six months so you can kind of predict what it's going to yes, be yes. but like the you should not quit your job on your first check like your first big brand deal no not at all and i feel like also there's like a big like misconception that they will expect that just because you are represented by management you're gonna get like constant brand deals like every month or every week not true yeah <laughs> not true totally like even if you're a great creator and you're like because obviously i feel like sometimes people don't understand like you have to be somewhat marketable creator creator that like you can market something yes like it's just not because you have numbers like you have to have an audience that you can sell it to you know that's how okay so i think this way about like a lot and this is again no shade to these people. yeah exactly not at all but like people that post more adult content or if they like curse a lot in their yeah. videos or if they're just like not very family friendly do you whatever like i i all consume your content but yeah. if that's not as brand friendly or like if you're a, a lot of girls like if you're a girl but your main audience is guys that follow you you're not gonna get to work with that many brands that you you know like other people are working with because your audience is not gonna purchase those, that product like 100%. you know what i'm saying like, yeah 100 like, percent. i feel like for me i have a mainly like female audience so like i can work with like female uh targeted brands yes, like yeah. princess polly or white fox or yeah. whatever like stores like that whereas like if you have mainly if you're a girl but you have mainly a male audience like you're not gonna work with the same brands because exactly. And if you're also a girl with a male audience, mainly, you're not going to necessarily work with, like, brands that even, like, are targeted to men because, like, yeah. you're not the target audience for that product. So it's kind of, like, true, true. you can't really, like, give your own opinion on it. So it's just, it's, you you kind of have to think about, like, who you want to target and, and create content for those people, too. Exactly. If you want to, like, work with a ton of brands. But if you don't, like, do you, like, post whatever you want, you know? But Exactly. I think it's just like people never think that like it is at the end of the day it's a business. Yeah. You still need to have some sort of a vision. Yes. Because if you don't have a vision and you're just like I'm because I feel like sometimes people think that like just because you're posting a vlog and they're like just about you. I'm like, is it really though? Like yeah. yes, it could be about my life, but I'm showing parts of my life. Like let's just say even if you're doing a grocery haul, right? Like or you're going to grocery you're kind of showing like what you're buying and like I might end up buying something you're buying because yeah. of what you're showing exactly. me. It's not necessarily because like it's about you. I feel like people sometimes think that like, oh, you're just so narcissistic and everything is about you or like all the pictures of you. I'm it's like, not. it's not true though, but yeah. that's the first thing people assume. I know. I've started to just like not care though. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I'm making money off of this. This is my business. People find value. People like this. And like, I like following other people that post this similar content. So like, Whatever you think about me, I don't care. Like, it's kind of like, I started to just be like, if you actually care about this or you, like, think differently because of me, like, I don't want you in my life anyways. I exactly. don't want you For me. sure. So, like, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that's also the reason I feel like it's so great that, like, a lot of creators, they branch out to making their own brands and doing other things because, because this business also, <laughs> that's what you get for living in <laughs> Brickle. <laughs> so... I feel like they create their own businesses because like I feel like first this business is unstable in many ways yeah. but also you want to at one point you want to do other things too yeah. you don't want to just there's nothing wrong with just being a creator but yeah. I feel like you kind of want to do other things too I also think that there's so many opportunities that happen when you're yeah. a creator so like even if you maybe never thought that you would start a business one day an opportunity presents itself or you yeah. get an idea based on the opportunities you've had yes and then you you're like this just makes sense and you have a leg up because you have an audience like yes. if you are a creator or if you want to start a business you i would definitely recommend a content strategy and like yeah. as a founder becoming a creator yourself not every business needs that yeah but i think it helps and if you have any interest in doing it i think it's only going to help like I don't know, I think that in businesses now, founders of businesses need to become creators too. Yeah, I agree. I think the only thing I would say, and I have seen your video about this too, is like, 
the you, you had the boutique before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those kind of businesses, don't get me wrong, I feel like if you can make it work, it works. But fashion is such a hard business to so create. Um, I have even experienced it just like as having my merch. A lot of times that like I have to switch the supplier just so I can get the merch out and like sometimes that like, quality wouldn't match. It is such a hard business to put it out there. What would you say like you have learned? Like what's like something big one of the biggest lessons you learned from that? So with that, like I'm glad I did it, but I definitely I'm sure it was definitely a good experience. Yeah. You learned so much. I think I thought like, oh, this is fun, like a clothing bag. Yeah, like this. It, is, it sounds fun. I mean, it's, I'm sure, like, touching a fabric, getting samples, like, it's it's such a fun process of yeah. doing it, but afterwards, I don't know, it's down the hill. Yeah, it's, it, it's just really hard to, like, make a big profit. Yeah. In the beginning, at least, and I don't think I gave it enough of a shot to, like, continue on with it, because I just didn't like it that much anymore. Yeah, I got you. But, like, it's really hard for, like, your margins to be big enough to actually make a profit because it costs it. a lot it costs, it a, costs lot. a lot especially your yeah it just like costs a lot and so and i think also there's so much competition in the space that mm -hmm. you really need to find something that makes you stand out and if you don't stand out then like why are you doing it and I like agree. you need to ask yourself with any business even with rella like what am i solving like what yeah, problem exactly. am i solving and you might think of fashion like you're not solving a problem but you are like you should like that, the merch that you create should be unique. You know, it shouldn't yes. look like everyone else's or less like, why are you doing it? Like, yeah. so like, I think it's one of those things that you really have to think about the problem you're solving and it can't just be like, oh, because I want to, because then it's not going to be a sustainable business. No, I, of course not. And I feel like also just because like people assume that like many businesses will help the creators, which is true, they would, but they're also taking a lot of the profit too, because I know I feel like first thing that comes out when every creator comes with a business they're like why is it so expensive yeah but I'm like because when there are so many businesses or if many like I, there's a middleman or if there's a manufacturer then there's the creator you gotta make some profit right. to make the business make sense right. and I feel like that's why the cost of something like so small sometimes even like just the merch of it like I would be very 100% honest, 9 out of 10, even most of, the, most of the merch people make is like, maybe they will get 30% margin, maybe, like that's like a big maybe, 9 out of 10 it's like maybe 15%, it's like, and that's just so like they can provide for their audience, mm -hmm. not like I'm saying that like, they're poor, yeah. but I'm just saying like it's like people automatically assume that like it's just so easy and you're making millions out of it. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, it's just not true at all. It's hard to like make money and have a sustainable business, I think. Yes, it is true. And I feel like that's my like uh, biggest lesson I have learned uh, after being a creator like a couple years, that like you should have multiple streams of income because you can never focus on like just one paycheck or one brand deal because I feel like that's what people think sometimes that like, oh, like I can sustain that or just because I got one big check you're gonna get that next month it's just not true that's why you have to have like then people say like oh just focus on one platform but I'm like it's just not sustainable no. it really is not you should have YouTube you should have TikTok I don't know you should have another business you should have a merge I don't know like some people sell presets if you're good with that you know yeah. like definitely expand that's the recommendation that I feel like I I would give to anyone who was starting out because I feel like especially if you want to do full time like, you can never be like, oh my god, like, I cannot pay rent this month because I don't have anything coming in. Totally. No, I, That's, like, such a scary feeling. Like, I know. I always think diversifying your revenue streams is great because then at least if one goes down or one, like, slows down, at least you have other things, like, that are paying you. For sure, for sure. Well, would you say, like, uh, let's just say, if, I don't know, like, maybe something else came along before even being a content creator... Would you have chosen that, like that path, different paths? I'm so happy I'm a content creator. Like, yeah. I think it's like literally the best job. I would not want to be doing anything else. I recognize yeah. how like lucky I am to even be doing this. So I don't think so. Like, I would always choose this anytime. I think. Yeah, I feel like sometimes, like for myself at least, maybe again, I feel like this is a different experience for everyone. I feel like sometimes getting hate comments. And I feel like, don't get me wrong, like, I think everyone gets hate comments, it's like a thing. But I feel like sometimes, like, some comments get under your skin. Yeah. And that kind of makes you question so much about yourself as a person, but also as a creator. That sometimes I feel like hits below the belt. You know what I mean? You have to, like, protect your peace. And yeah. 
block people and I don't with like certain keywords so like yeah. you shouldn't say that but I'm like that still somehow comes along I'm like do I buy like different they're words they're creative they're creative no <laughs> you have to just be like I am going to block you I'm going to delete this and I don't care if that like you just like and and you have to push it out of your head because I think if you leave hate comments up they snowball because then someone else is going to read that and be like oh wait I didn't think about that but yeah that person's right and then they pile on. No one necessarily wants to be the first one, but like if some if you see someone else leave a hate comment, you're gonna have a train of hate comments. So delete it when you see it. I think oh, that's a very good advice. I didn't think of that. Oh, yeah, because that's what happens. Because they yeah. start liking it, and they and it gets onto the top. Yeah. It becomes like the one of the most liked and comments. It's, it's your page. You can delete it if you want to. Like. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see when people are like, oh, they delete hate comments. It's like, yeah, so? Like, I, it's your page. Like, of course you're going to delete it. Like, I don't understand. Like, if you want to, like, talk crap about someone, go do it on your own page. You don't need to do it on someone else's. Yeah, that is for sure. What would you say, like, how do you keep your peace, like, as mental health-wise? Like, being a creator, I feel like, because so much of it is, like, out there of you. I mean, obviously, it depends on, like, what, how much you share. Because I feel like people sometimes think, like, you share every single yeah. thing. But I'm like, that's only, like, one one thing or one side of you that yeah. you're sharing. How do you keep your peace? I definitely am, like, selective with what I share. Yeah. I want people to obviously feel like they know me and, uh -huh. like, feel like they know my personality and all yes. of that, which I think that they do because I feel like I'm the same on camera as I am mm -hmm. in person. But I don't share every detail of my life because I think that's also when you get a lot of hate is when you start oversharing mm, and sure. like you pee them people feel like they have an opinion on like your life uh, yes. and it's like I'm going to show you what I do in a day. I'm going to show you the behind the scenes of my life, but I will not show you all the relationships and my feelings and all like if, if I feel like it's going to help people. Sure, I'll share it, but like I'm not giving you details because I don't want an opinion on this and so I don't share things that I want that I don't want opinions on um and also I I think I've just learned to like realize that if someone is being negative or mm. saying something mean about you and they don't know you that says more about them and that's just like sad because like I watch plenty of people that I might think like oh my god that like I, I might think like like be like oh yikes I don't like that yeah. person or I yeah, don't like yeah. that or sure, sure. I wouldn't have said that or I don't whatever like I might mm -hmm. think like negative things about someone that I'm watching yeah I would never in my life comment it though like ever yeah. same I had this thought but I'm like I would never put it in no. words and like, like I wouldn't and the fact that some people feel the need to type that out and hit send and share it not just think it I'm like that's really sad and so like you must be craving attention you must be craving like there must be something missing in your life for you to feel the need to post that and so like that's just sad and i would like i wish you well you know like i want to delete that and i wish you well because like the type of person that has that would do that is like yeah there's something and i think on. that's why sometimes i would say at least that like that's why it's good to also take a break sometimes yeah. because i feel like it's not just, just because like I feel like in the past at least like you would have to post like every single day on Instagram and everything is like, kind of a thing now you just post like once a week like yeah. twice maybe on a good day once a week maybe <laughs> yeah that's like once a week maybe so I'm like I think people sometimes see that as a like a bad thing but I'm like I think it's actually good to take a break because so you too. get to reflect so much on yourself but also on your craft that like you can bring something like better to the table or just something yeah. creative to the table that like you're passionate about mm -hmm. right and like what you're posting is meaningful instead of just like posting filler content you know <sighs> i feel like we used to, i used to do that all the time i know i'm like oh my god i have nothing to post let me go back <laughs> Did I, I, edit any content? I look up like a you're like a leaf and i'm like here yeah, it's like, oh it's just like aesthetic yeah that's why now what i like actually though like you know you can hide your likes but sometimes oh, yeah. i just want to share like some dumps you know like some like random photos yeah. it's just because it's aesthetic and i know it's not gonna get me thousand likes I maybe we get like 400 oh yeah and i will hide my likes if it doesn't get a thousand likes same i'm like, like i don't care for it i'm like i don't, I don't care for it i don't need to see that yeah also because i didn't realize it also affects your engagement rate too oh really yeah because at least that's what i see in some of the analytics you know like they can check your analytics and like i saw it in like my dashboard and i was like <laughs> i was like oh no that's not good because i used to like have a like much higher engagement than like now it's down to like three points like everyone has bad engagement now though so like hopefully that makes you feel better yeah that's how i see that also the reach and like whenever i see it i'm like oh 
It's sad. It's, sad. it's, it's sad. truly sad. It's okay. Yeah, I know. It's true. What would you say, like, what is, like, next for you? Like, do you think anything else, like, that might be coming up or you're thinking about it? I know you guys are thinking about merch for Dorella. So. Oh, yeah. We do want to create merch for Rella. Um, I think just really focusing on Rella and continuing to make it, you know, like, for content creators and helping them grow on social media. Like, that's really our goal is I've seen the opportunities that social media has presented in my life. And, yes. Like, my friends' lives, and it is a business, and you can completely change your life by doing it. And so, I want to make it as easy as possible for creators to grow on social media and have a foundation to grow this as a business. And so, it's really what Rella wants to do. It's our mission. It's what why we're doing what we're doing. And so, just like continuing that is is the goal. Yeah, and I will put your links down below. So uh, she's your own TikTok, your own Instagram, your own YouTube podcast, so. everything. Yes, yeah, she also the podcast. I love your podcast because I think it shows like. What is behind the scenes of what's going on? That's why I love the name, the Real Real Podcast. So I'll yeah. definitely put it in the link so you guys can check them out. Thank you so much for coming with the pod. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah, this was really fun. Thank you.